When we introduced inner products and inner product spaces, link in the description, we talked about how this gives us a way to understand what the angle between vectors is in any inner product space. And so we can give meaning to angles in some surprising places. In this video, we'll see exactly how that is done. How do we define the angle between vectors in a general inner product space? And what does it mean for two vectors to be orthogonal in an inner product space? We'll also, of course, see some examples. This video has chapters, so you can skip around as you please. So what is meant by the angle between two vectors in a real inner product space? In Rn with the dot product, you may recall that we defined the angle theta between two vectors u and v to be the arc cosine of u dot v divided by the product of their magnitudes. But in order for this to make sense in any real inner product space, we need that inner product between u and v, which used to just be the dot product, but now of course could be any inner product, we need that inner product divided by the product of the magnitudes of u and v to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Otherwise, taking the inverse cosine of this expression would not have meaning. For example, we can't take the inverse cosine of 2. So, to just make the obvious generalization of taking this definition and replacing the dot product with a general inner product, we need to be assured that this expression is between negative 1 and positive 1. And sure enough, it is. And we can show this quickly with the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality for inner products. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson going over this inequality and proving it, but it says that if u and v are vectors in a real inner product space v, then the magnitude of their inner product is less than or equal to the product of their magnitudes. And this inequality is equivalent to this one for the magnitude of this inner product to be less than or equal to the product of the magnitudes means that the inner product is between the negative product of magnitudes and the positive product of magnitudes. Then, simply dividing this whole inequality by the product of the magnitudes, we have negative 1 on the left, positive 1 on the right, and of course this familiar expression, the inner product of u and v, divided by the product of u and v's magnitudes. So we can take that same familiar definition for the angle between vectors in Rn and generalize it to any real inner product space. If u and v are vectors in a real inner product space v, we will define the angle theta between those vectors u and v as the arc cosine of the inner product of u and v divided by the product of their magnitudes. And for non-zero vectors, as was the case with Rn, this angle theta between them will only be pi over 2, or 90 degrees, if the inner product of the vectors is zero. Hence, this is how we define two vectors being orthogonal. Two vectors, u and v, in an inner product space, v, are called orthogonal if their inner product is equal to zero. Hence, this would be zero, and theta, the angle between them, would be pi over 2. Now let's do some examples. Let's find the angle between this polynomial p and this polynomial q with respect to the standard inner product on the vector space p2 of degree at most 2 polynomials. As a quick recap, if you don't recall the standard inner product on this space, here is how it's defined. It's just the sum of the products of the coefficients of the same degree terms. So with that in mind, we can compute the angle between these two vectors, which in this case, of course, are polynomials. First, to calculate the inner product of p and q, we multiply and add their corresponding coefficients. So negative 1 is a constant, we multiply that by q's constant term of 2. Then 4 is the coefficient of the x term for p, we'll multiply that by 1, the coefficient of the x term for q. And then 3 is the coefficient of the x squared term for p. We'll multiply that by negative 5, the coefficient of the x squared term for q. Do all that multiplication, add everything together, and we get negative 13 for the inner product. Then we also need to find the magnitudes, or norms, of these two vectors in order to find the angle between them. The norm of p is the square root of the inner product of p with itself which of course is just going to result in adding the squares of the coefficients. So negative 1 squared, which is 1, 4 squared, which is 16, and 3 squared, which is 9. So the norm of p is the square root of 26. As for q, its norm is the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, 
plus 1 squared, which is 1, plus negative 5 squared, which is 25. So the norm of Q is the square root of 30. So refer back to that definition of the angle between vectors. We've now got the inner product, we've got the magnitudes, now we'll just have to do this expression and take the inverse cosine. So theta, the angle between these two vectors, P and Q, is the arc cosine of negative 13 divided by that product of the magnitudes, and this is about 118 degrees. Now what that means for the angle between these degrees two polynomials to be about 118 degrees, I'll leave for you to ponder, but suffice to say the polynomials are not orthogonal. Here's another quick example. Remember when we were asked to find the angle between those polynomials, we were asked to do so with respect to a particular inner product. Of course, the angle between two vectors depends on the inner product being considered, and so whether or not two vectors are orthogonal could also change depending on the inner product. For example, these vectors u and v are orthogonal with respect to the standard inner product, the dot product, on r squared. We can see that by multiplying their corresponding components and adding them, 2 plus negative 2, it's 0. So the vectors are orthogonal with respect to the standard inner product on r squared. But if we consider a different inner product, say this weighted Euclidean inner product, where the product of the first components is doubled, the vectors are no longer orthogonal. Under this inner product, the inner product of u and v is 2 times that product of their first components plus the product of their second components, and this is equal to 2, which is not 0. So with respect to this inner product, u and v aren't orthogonal. Here's one more example. These are two vectors in the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices, this matrix u and this matrix v. If you don't recall, this is the standard inner product on this space, the inner product of two matrices u and v, is the trace of u transpose times v. Now, it turns out when you do this, you end up just multiplying the corresponding entries of the matrices together and adding them. I'll leave a link in the description to my video going over that. But in the end, this means that the inner product of these two matrices, u and v, is, by definition, just going to be the product of their corresponding entries added together. So 0 times 1 plus 3 times 0 plus negative 1 times 0, plus 0 times 5, which is equal to 0. Hence, these two matrices, u and v, are orthogonal with respect to the standard inner product on the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices. So that's a quick introduction to angles and orthogonality in real inner product spaces, as well as a handful of basic examples. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get access to early and exclusive videos, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access all of the lecture notes for the course. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.